Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. GNOME 3.36 was released today and it's an important one since it's going to be the default in Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. The GNOME team has been hard at work providing a simple, stable desktop environment with a few evolutions that I think you'll like. So I think it's time we take a tour at what's new in GNOME 3.36. Let's start. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Most of you probably know about it, but for those who don't, Skillshare is an online learning community which offers classes on almost every subject. Now, since we're talking about Linux here, you could learn to improve your Linux system administration with this great course that already has a thousand students, or you could just learn to use some simple batch scripts to automate your daily tasks. As you might have noticed, I started filming myself a lot more, and I tend to struggle with lighting. My videos are often too dark or with artifacts that I need to correct after the fact, losing quality, losing frame rate. It's not great. And I've been following this film lighting class on Skillshare, which is going to help me make better use of the tools I've got to get some better lighting and better quality videos. Skillshare is very simple to use and affordable. Your basic account is free, but to get more classes and to be able to download them and view them offline, you can sign up for as little as $10 a month. If you want to give it a try, click the link in the description below. The first 500 subscribers that click on the link will get two months of free premium subscription so you can explore your creativity. The desktop. The GNOME shell has been touched up a bit. The system menu, the settings, lock and power menu are now listed in a menu instead of in buttons. Not a big change and I prefer the previous appearance, but at least the suspend option is always visible. The clock notification panel has been revamped to be more legible and give more space to the various elements it displays. Everything is now displayed in a card to get more separation and icons have been made bigger to be more legible at a glance. If you have media controls, you now get some hover effects, which don't seem like much, but add more interactivity to the desktop. The Do Not Disturb toggle was already present, but it's now much more accessible, directly from the clock notification panel. The card-based layout is also present in the search results. Every category is now located on its own card, so you can parse the results more easily. GNOME 3.34 introduced the ability to create application folders in the app grid, and this feature has been improved, mostly performance-wise. The animations are more responsive and should be a little bit more legible. All app folders will now open centered, to make them more predictable to use and easier to rename if you need to. The dialogues that the shell generates, such as the password prompts, have also been unified. They won't display icons anymore, they will display more helpful subtext, and they will always appear centered, since there are important actions that require your attention. In password dialogs, you can now click the eye icon to display the password you've entered and make sure it's correct. The gestures have also been improved, especially when switching from a virtual desktop to the other, since the movement now follows your finger on the touchpad, instead of acting like a keyboard shortcut. This goes a long way to make GNOME feel a lot more responsive. The lock screen also looks a bit better with a blurred background and a little wiggling of the input field if you mistype or if caps lock is on. As always, a few GNOME applications gain some features, but the main highlight here is the new extensions application. Now this app is not GNOME tweaks and it's just going to list all installed applications and allow you to configure them, disable them, and that's about it. It's basically a list of applications, but it's still nice to see GNOME making strides towards enabling more users to see that applications are a thing. The only problem is that GNOME developers are once again breaking compatibility with extensions in GNOME 3.36. This means that extension developers will have to update and fix the stuff that GNOME has broken again. And this is a bit annoying. In terms of new features, GNOME software gets a meter toggle to tell the system you're using a connection that has a data cap and featured app banners are also slightly tweaked to look a bit better. Epiphany, GNOME's web browser, now supports dark mode on websites and it can open PDFs in a tab instead of always downloading them. GNOME Clocks has an all-new design as well, which is responsive, so the app can now work correctly on smartphone-sized devices. The file manager can now handle hidden files in the template folder. You could, for example, create a .htaccess template or a .gitignore file and put it in there. Once you use the context menu, these files will now appear in the new document menu. Files can now also handle moving and copying operations on Google Drive, so using that as extra storage should now be a lot simpler. Something a bit more rare, GNOME 3.36 will switch up the recommended applications this time around. Shutwell has been replaced with GNOME Photos, Rhythmbox was replaced with GNOME Music, and Evolution was replaced by Geary and GNOME Calendar. The distributions shipping GNOME will still get the last say on what will or won't ship by default, obviously, 
but we can expect distros willing to ship as pure GNOME as possible, like Fedora, to follow these recommendations. Now, I honestly don't mind having Evolution replaced by two separate programs, since GNOME Calendar and Geary are capable clients, and I don't think many people will use desktop clients anyways. Gnome Music is okay compared to Rhythmbox, but Gnome Photos is not on par with Shotwell, I think, and Gnome Photos really needs to make some strides in terms of UX and features to be able to match Shotwell, so I'm not sure about that decision. Finally, the settings have underwent their usual revamp, with all network connections being grouped under Network and Internet, and the Details subsection has been removed entirely, which should limit the number of clicks needed to access some settings. The About page also shows a bit more information about your system. Now to conclude, GNOME 3.36 is an improvement and polish release mainly. There is nothing groundbreaking here, but it's good to see the GNOME developers making moves toward extensions and allowing users to discover that these exist and configure them more easily than having to install a dedicated GNOME Tweaks application. Still, extension developers will still have to fix what GNOME broke again, which is compatibility. And as long as GNOME doesn't provide a stable API to use extensions, the situation is not going to improve, and since the GNOME developers tend to offload the features they don't want to include in their main desktop environment to extension developers, they're gonna have to fix this at some point. A lot of distributions are shipping extensions by default, whether it's dash to dock, dash to panel, notification icons, there are a lot of features that are added back by distributions, and it's gonna be tough for them to follow GNOME if they keep breaking things every single update. Now, users that didn't like the GNOME workflow or look and feel won't be swayed by this new release. It's an incremental improvement and they're still not gonna like GNOME. Users that love GNOME will love it even more, with the new speed improvements, the app grid improvements to create folders, the multi-touch gestures on Wayland, the new revamped settings which are better laid out, the options to launch applications using a dedicated GPU. All of that contributes to making GNOME a more featureful and more usable environment, and I'm all for it. Now, GNOME 3.36 should already be available on most rolling releases. If it's not, it might be because your distro is shipping an extension that has not been fixed yet. Other distributions might take a little bit more time to include it in their repositories. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of GNOME 3.36's new features. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!